So the first thing we've got to say before we even get into the episode review itself is that I have to talk about how much I absolutely adore that opening reread by Asian Kung Fu Generation. If you don't know, they did the second opening in Naruto. They did like opening selling a bleach. They did like a bunch of awesome and amazing songs. And we also got to hear like the ending as well. Like Sorowa Chisana Hikari no Yono by uh, Sayuri, I believe it is. And that is a pretty goddamn awesome ass ending. I gotta lie. Really great visuals. I absolutely adored like all the stuff going through the Asian Kung Fu Generation episode. Like that was really good. And honestly, you guys seriously need to check out that old meme because it is absolutely fantastic. Just like the entire thing, like everything, like the sea just flooding and crashing down and seeing like all that stuff that's going across like throughout the entire series and all that i'm very curious to see where exactly is it going to go because you know that i believe from what we've heard that they are going to do, be doing the ending of the manga they're going to be showing that before like they are. i believe the actual uh, manga chapter comes out like it's being worked with the actual manga so, so there's a lot of interesting stuff to come out with this uh, whole episode and like with our uh, whole series what's going to happen to it So Satoru seems to like going back to like kind of school life. He's like, yeah, what the hell's going on? You know, like why, why it was like all these years ago, you know, like it was 2006 and now we're back to like 1990, like 1998. Like, and now he's back like to, it's 1988. Like what the hell is going on? Like why, like what happened to like all those 20 years ago? Like why, why is I going back? And it's like seemingly like he's gone back in time to solve out like all the problems that happened. And that like, as he sees like immediately like there's like, oh, there's like Hinazuki's right there. Like Kayo, like it's like, holy shit. And it actually is a little bit interesting. In fact, like, if you guys didn't know that this, did you know that she's actually voiced by the same person that does Tatsumaki in One Punch Man? Yeah, I bet you didn't expect that. Honestly, when I was hearing the entire episode, I thought she was voiced by I like Haibara from Detective Conan because that voice sounds completely the same to that one. If you've actually heard Conan before, it really sounds a lot like that, uh, the kind of the low T kind of voice. And it's honestly, I never expected it to be Tatsumaki because she's doing it very low voice and not like kind of like very high pitched, like what you see with like Tatsumaki in One Punch Man. But he's immediately trying trying, like, trying to, like, you know, fit back in with his friends and everything, trying to talk with them also as well, trying to get close to, like, Hinatsuki, which we also find out that her mom has been beating the living dog shit out of her. You see, like, bruises out of her everywhere. Like, it's just her mom's, like, stepping on her, kicking the shit out of my like, yeah. This episode kind of went very dark, like, throughout this episode. It was, like, it was very well paced as well. Like, like it wasn't, like, slow paced, but it was definitely going at a methodical pace where it was, like, showing you, like, him trying to set but, like, back into, like, the normal school life, but also as well noticing, like, this is what I need to fix. I need to, like, get on this thing. And, like, I appreciate that one of his friends as well, like, Kenya, I believe his name was. Like, he wasn't dumb. He was, like, no, like, you know, definitely I know that you definitely want to get close to Himizuki, and it's, like, oh, I, I know it's, like, probably nothing to do with love or something, but it's, like, I know you want something you want to look out for and stuff like that. It's, like, when he actually even confronted her the first time, it's, like, okay, I'll be your friend, but you got to kill someone for me. And that's definitely, I think, like, although that was a joking matter, you could definitely see that that was talking about, like, the whole mom situation, saying, yeah, I want you to kill my mom. Because we seemingly don't know about the father. I'm guessing that he must have left sometime, or, like, maybe, like, she might have just had the kid, but then she couldn't deal with it anymore, like, the stress, and she's, like, probably, like, an alcoholic or something like that. We honestly don't know. We have to find out more later on throughout the series. But also as well, what we saw with, like, you know, Kayo as well. Like, she kind of does have that kind of warm side to her as well. Like, she definitely, when she was, like, kind of talking to her, say, oh, I want to be a friend and all that. And she was saying, oh, but, you know, you kind of just invited me like that. He's like, nope, you're the first one on the list. Like, like Satoru is definitely doing everything in his power to, like, make sure she feels, like, very, like, welcome. And I kind of appreciate that it's, like, He's got, like, two different voice actors. Like, you had the main guy from, like, all the 20 years ago and all that. you still got his voice. And then, also, this is where you got, like, the little kid's voice as well. So, they're definitely trying to do, like, Detective Conan kind of feeling with, like, you sometimes hear, like, Jimmy Kudo's voice, like, uh, like adult form. And then you hear, like, the kid form as well. So, definitely, that's what they're kind of doing with it. And it's, like, I kind of feel like I've already got a bit of attachment to it. Because they're definitely trying to do stuff like that. So, uh, honestly, I'm really enjoying it so far. Like, so far from with a race and all that. It's not like, uh, oh, my God, amazing. Like, kind of like what it was with, like, like the first episode, like, oh my god, just crazy, like, going down, but this one, it's definitely keeping up with that, like, very dark tone that it's keeping up with, and that very methodical pace, and I'm looking forward to what's going to be happening, I am a little bit concerned if it does keep with this pacing, because obviously, like, you know, they're going to be blitzing through chapters and stuff, so I'm kind of concerned, like, what are they going to be doing, like, I'm really, like, worrying if, like, after episode nine or something like that, just, it just goes insane, like, like, it just, stuff just keeps happening like that, like that, like that, 
So I hope it comes at like, you know, a good pacing. And that's one thing I trust A1 pitchers, but they are known to go for pacing quite a lot throughout their series. So we'd honestly have to wait and see like what's going to be happening with them. But, you know, they are working with the actual market himself. So I, I do have faith in that. So we'll honestly have to wait and see. I did enjoy this episode. I thought this was like a seven and a half out of 10. I thought it was a really good episode and I cannot wait to see more of the race. I'm very looking forward to it. And I would like to actually keep reviewing this weekly. We'll honestly have to keep seeing it. The, key, the quality keeps up with that. Then yes, I'll be definitely keep talking about it. But that's all for me. So thank you much for watching always. And I will catch you guys next time.